might look as though it's a very ordinary car, one that you'd see in everyday traffic, but actually it's a very different sort of car, and I'm just finding out a little bit about it. Well, Roy Doring, uh, you've designed and built the electric engine that powers this car. How is it actually more advantageous than a piston engine car? Well, it's more economical to run, it's noiseless, smog-free, and you look at the motor about every 15 years. That's all the maintenance you have in the, as far as the engine is concerned. Now, this is not a new idea. They've had the electric cars for a long time. Why aren't there more of them about? Well, about 50 years ago, these cars uh, were much better than any petrol car at the time. And uh, then as they progressed to the development of the petrol car, these became dormant for about 50 years. Nothing's been done. Although I've been driving them for about 30 years myself, and I'm a firm believer of their use. And they're smog free, and they'll have to use them in congested cities. Um, now, they're much cheaper than an ordinary car to run. Um, just what are the costs? Well, to give you an example. To run this car on petrol for four shillings, you'd only do about 30 miles or 35 miles. I do for about 140 miles for four shillings. How do you charge it up? You just plug it into the wall. There's a charger built into the back of the car. Just plug it into the wall like an ordinary iron plug, and then it cuts itself off when the batteries are charged. What sort of speed can you do in this car? Speed varies. You set the speed to the type of country you're running it in, or township. If it's uh, very closely populated, you govern it around about 25 to 30. But if you want to do faster speeds, you can go up to 50 if you want to, but it's not economical to run. What do you mean, not economical? Well, like everything else, you can't get something for nothing, and if you speed it up over 30 miles an hour, your amperage goes up, and of course, the mileage drops in proportion. And what sort of mileage can you get then on this car? Uh, between thir 20 and 30 miles an hour, you can do 40 miles on a charge. Well, let's uh, stop and have a, a look and see what this engine is like. Now, this is the complete motor, is it, Mr. Doring? Yes, just the one motor. It is 64 years old, I've overhauled it, it has an armature through it, only one moving part. And the motor I took out, the combustion motor, had about 400 moving parts. So you can see they're quite simple and you only need to look at the brushes by taking this plate off every 14 to 15 years. And just cleaning the commutator. What about these other parts of the car, what are they? Oh, well, these are what we call the clappers or the speed control. As each one of these clappers come in, they cut more of the resistances out and you go fast until you reach the last one and then you've got the full speed, no resistance, you're going full speed. Whatever you control the motor to run at, 30, 40 miles an hour. And the batteries, I see there's only just two of them. No, there are four, uh, 13 altogether, there are 11 more in the back. And are they normal batteries? No, they're specially made traction batteries, have a greater capacity of acid, which makes it more suitable for traction work. You get much more benefit from them. Is this the ultimate in, in batteries for a no, car? No, no, no. We're just waiting for a breakthrough now on the batteries. When, the, when they get the breakthrough and we can dispose of the batteries, you can see that all that dead weight we're carrying around, you'll be able to get into the speed range and everything like that. And I estimate in about one and a half to two years, with all the money they're spending now, all these big concerns, we will get it. Well, do you think I could have a drive? Quite simple. Anybody could drive it. Okay. Pretty easy. Just <laughs> <laughs>